Welcome to season three of the Nerd Librarian Show with Mr. Evans. Three seasons. I am so grateful to be here for a third year of the show. I want to give a sincere thank you to the executive producer over at Evans Studios for having the faith in me and the faith in the Nerd Librarian Show to pick us up for another year. That's so amazing, but not really, because I am the executive producer at Evans Studios, as well as the writer, the director, the sound guy, the video editor, the promoter. I'm even the guy that runs to get coffee for everyone, which isn't so bad because I'm just getting coffee for myself. On today's show, a family hides in a bunker to be safe from the apocalypse, only to discover they are being held hostage there. A young lady who refuses to speak, and the reason will leave you speechless. An even more twisted version of the already twisted classic, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, John Green's lesser known novel, An Abundance of Catherines, is abundantly awesome. All this and more on our first episode of our third season. Let's get started! Our first book, The Compound by S.A. Bodine, is a story of a family that has lived six years in an underground bunker. Yikes. You see, the dad is super wealthy and also super paranoid that the apocalypse will happen. Because of this, the father builds an underground compound to keep the family safe in case of some sort of end of days event. Good thing, because one day, something terrible happens and the father rushes them into the compound, the beautiful, luxurious, incredible compound that only a mega wealthy person like Eli's father could build. Six years pass by and Eli just can't take being in that bunker anymore. And I can't blame him. I mean, six years, I can barely stand still for 30 seconds. Eli starts wondering if maybe he'd be better off outside of the compound. Then he starts wondering if maybe his father brought them there to keep them safe or to hold them hostage. Let's take a look. Eli and his family have lived in the compound for six years. The world they knew is gone. Eli's father built the compound to keep them safe. Now, they can't get out. He won't let them. The Compound by S.A. Bodine. Available wherever books are sold. This book is twisted, it's claustrophobic. Basically, it's every high school kid's worst nightmare. Come check it out. At the end of summer, before her ninth grade year, Melinda calls the cops on a big end of summer party. The party gets broken up, of course, and everyone hates her for it. Not a great way to start ninth grade, but Melinda didn't call the cops because of the party. Something happened. The problem is, she doesn't speak anymore because of what happened at that party. Devastated by the events of that night, yet unable to speak about it, she slinks deeper into isolation. Slowly, we start to get a picture of what took place that terrible night, and it will rip your heart out. There are a few things that I absolutely love about this novel. First of all, it's just a great story that will keep you turning pages from beginning to end. 
Second, Lori Hulse Anderson manages to write a masterpiece by having Melinda as the narrator of the story, even though she doesn't talk. So, the whole thing is actually told through Melinda's thoughts, but the author still doesn't let us know everything about Melinda, so that haunting information can unfold with the story. It's brilliant and so entertaining. A third thing I really appreciate about Speak uh, is that it deals with issues that are really important for teen boys and teen girls to read about. Sometimes high school students show me that they are some of the strongest, bravest human beings alive. Melinda is no exception. What a novel. Speaking of being strong and brave, here are really cool quotes from a lot of great young adult novels. Let's check it out. Our next novel is called The Looking Glass Wars, and it's a creepy take on an already twisted classic, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Let's take a look. The Looking Glass Wars. You know the myth. A little girl named Alice tumbled down a rabbit hole and proceeded to have a charming adventure in the delightful, made-up world of Wonderland. Now discover the truth. Wonderland exists. Alice Hart, heir to the Wonderland throne, was forced to flee through the Pool of Tears after a bloody palace coup staged by the murderous Red. Lost and alone in Victorian London, Alice is befriended by an aspiring author to whom she tells the violent, heartbreaking story of her young life, only to see it published as the nonsensical Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Alice had trusted Lewis Carroll to tell the truth so that someone, somewhere, would find her and bring her home. But Carroll had gotten it all wrong. He even misspelled her name. If not for royal bodyguard Hatter Madigan's non-stop search to locate the lost princess, Alice may have become just another society woman sipping tea in a too tight corset. Instead of returning to Wonderland to fight Red for her rightful place as the Queen of Hearts, meet the heroic, passionate, monstrous, vengeful denizens of this parallel world as they battle each other with AD-52s and orb generators, navigate the crystal continuum, bet on Jabberwock fights, and travel across the chessboard desert. The Looking Glass Wars unabashedly challenges our Wonderland assumptions of mad tea parties, sleepy dormice, and a curious little blonde girl to reveal an epic battle in the endless war for imagination.
Like the trailer, the book is awesome. And if you check out the book and like it as much as I think you will, I highly encourage you to read Alice in Wonderland, if you haven't already. And if you have already, read it again. It's worth reading twice, three times, four times. What's next? Yes, we all know who John Green is. We've all heard of The Fault in Our Stars, which is a haunting and exceptional book, but John Green has written a number of other great novels, including this one. An Abundance of Catherines is about Colin Singleton. More specifically, it's about the type of girls that Colin Singleton always seems to end up with. Even more specifically, it's about the name of every girl that he ends up with. Catherine. That's right. Colin always ends up with girls named Catherine. 19 of them so far. And Colin always gets dumped by girls named Catherine. One Catherine didn't want to play in the sandbox with him when they were in elementary school. One just wanted to be friends. One broke his heart bad. One Catherine even broke up with him through email. Ugh. Our story is about this brilliant young man. Oh, did I forget to mention he's a brilliant prodigy who makes anagrams out of everything and is currently working on a mathematical formula to predict love called the theorem of underlying Catherine predictability? This brilliant young man is on a road trip with his Judge Judy obsessed best friend, Hassan, and he's looking for the next Catherine when he meets and gets to know a young lady by the name of Lindsay. Wait, what? Yeah, that's right. A girl named Lindsay. And Lindsay's boyfriend cheated on her and Colin consoles her as he jokes with her that they could never be together because her name isn't Catherine. Or could they? Will Lindsay change his dating pattern? and change his life? Will his theorem of underlying Catherine predictability change the way the world falls in love? Will his friend get over his obsession with Judge Judy? Probably not, because Judge Judy is fierce. But you have to come to the library to get the answers to those other questions. And what do you know? That's it for another episode of The Nerd Librarian Show with Mr. Evans. As always, be good to each other, monsoons.